So you've described the brain breaking idea that a black hole is uh, not so much a super dense matter as it's sometimes described, mm -hmm. but it's more akin to you know a region of space time, but even more so just nothing. Yeah, it's nothing. <laughs> That, that's the thing you seem to like to say. Can I you... do. I do like to say that <laughs> black holes are no thing. No They're thing. They're nothing. Okay. So what, um, what, is, what does that and mean? That's, that's what I mean. That's the more profound aspect of the black hole. So you asked originally, um, how do they form? And I think that, that, that even when you try to form them in messy astrophysical systems, there's still nothing at the end of the day left behind. And, um, this was a very big surprise, even though Einstein accepted that this was a true prediction. He didn't think that that they'd be made. And, and it was quite astounding that that people like Oppenheimer, actually, it's probably Oppenheimer's most important theoretical work, um, who were thinking about nuclear physics and quantum mechanics, but in the context of these kind of utopian questions. Why do stars shine? Um, why is the sun radiant and hot and this amazing source of light? And it was people like Oppenheimer who began to ask the question, well, could stars collapse to form black holes? Could they become so dense that uh, eventually not even light would escape? And that's why I think people think that black holes are these dense objects. That's often how it's described. But actually what happens, these very massive stars, they're burning thermonuclear fuel. You know, they're earthfuls of thermonuclear fuel they're burning um, and emitting energy in E equals MC squared energy. So it's fusing, it's a fusion bomb. It's a constantly going thermonuclear bomb. And um, eventually it's going to run out of fuel. It's going to run out of hydrogen, helium stuff to fuse. It hits an iron core. Iron to go past iron with fusion is actually energetically expensive. So it's no longer going to do that so easily. So suddenly it's run out of fuel. And if the star is very, very, very massive, much more massive than our sun, maybe 20, 30 times the mass of our sun, it'll collapse under its own weight. And that collapse is incredibly fast and dramatic and it creates a shock wave. So that's the supernova explosion. So a lot of these, they rebound because once they crunch, they've reached a new critical uh, capacity where they can reignite to higher elements, heavier elements, and that sets off a bomb, essentially. So the star explodes, helpfully, because that's why you and I are here, because stars send their material back out into space, and you and I get to be made of carbon and oxygen and all this good stuff. We're not just hydrogen. So <laughs> the suns do that for us. And then what's left sometimes ends at a neutron star which is a very cool object, very fascinating object, super dense, uh, but bigger than a black hole, meaning it's, it's, it's not compact enough to become a black hole. It's an actual thing. A neutron star is a real thing. It's like a giant neutron. Literally, electrons get jammed into the protons and make this giant nucleus and this superconducting matter. Very strange, amazing objects. But if it's heavier than that, the core, and that's you know, heavier than twice the mass of the sun, um, it will become a black hole. And Oppenheimer was wrote this beautiful paper in 1939 with his student uh, saying that they believed that the end state of gravitational collapse is actually a black hole. This is stunning and really um, a visionary conclusion. Now, the paper is published the same day the Nazis advance on Poland. <laughs> and so it does not get a lot of fanfare in the newspapers. <laughs> yeah, we, we think there's a lot of drama today on social media. Imagine that. <laughs> yeah. Like, here's a guy who predicts how actually in nature would be the formation of this most radical of objects that broke even Einstein's brain, mm -hmm. while one of the most evil, if not the most evil humans in history starting a uh, the mm -hmm. first steps of a global war. What I also love about that lesson is how agnostic science is. Yeah. Because he was asking these utopian questions, as were other people of the time, about the nuclear physics and stars. 